Hello, this video will show you how to put an indent in the back of an object that will fit a magnet and then you have a beautiful magnet to give to a loved one. Um, this particular model was done as a result of videos I made showing how to use a canvas with the spline tool to trace an object and then how to extrude it on two different levels. Um, it happens to be the horse icon of my school. So, and I also am creating this for students who may use the magnets I purchased, which have a diameter of six and a height of two millimeters. So those are the numbers I'll be using in this video. Obviously, if you have different size magnets, you'll want to adjust those dimensions accordingly. So, whatever object you're using, you're going to want to put the magnet on the back. So, I'm going to use the navigation tool so I can see the bottom. Um, in fact, I think I'm just going to look straight at the bottom. That will help me line up my circle nicely. As you may know, when you create sketches, you can click the face of an existing object. So since I need to make a sketch, I'm going to click, I just clicked create sketch, it wants me to know where I want to sketch and I actually want to sketch on the back of my object. So I'm clicking that and for some reason it, it flips it around for me. I prefer working upside right. So now I'm going to create a circle. There's a couple circle ways to make a circle. There's actually five. Center diameter is the most common, and I think I'll go ahead and stick with that because now I can position my mouse about where I think the center is and where I might want my magnet to be. And so as I start pulling out, it's now asking me how big I want my diameter. And as I said, I have six millimeter magnets. So I'm actually going to type in 6.2 because you always want a little wiggle room um, for your for you know imprecision in your printing so i'm going to hit ok and all i've done is make a circle but now what i'm going to do and i'm going to tilt my view a little bit so you can see what's happening and i'll pull to the okay so i now want to i'm going to finish my sketch and i'm now going to push that circle into my object and i will do it using the extrude tool so once i click the extrude tool tool um, I believe my circle was selected, and that's why it automatically assumes I want to extrude the circle. I can change my mind and extrude that if I want. Um, if I want to cancel those choices, I'm going to click here to cancel both choices and reselect the circle. And so now I can push either way. I don't want to pull it out because that's doing the opposite of what I want. And I don't know if you know this, but anytime you're creating something that's going to turn into a cut that will be indicated with red highlighting which is hard to see because my circle selected but you can see it in there um, and I want that to go back in two millimeters so it's a negative number to indicate it's a cut and I'm going to make it two millimeters based on the magnets I purchased and now when I click OK you can see if I look at it from different angles, there's a hole in the back of my horse. So that would be ready to save it as an STL and print, which I will actually make a second video for. Um, so I hope that helps you. And feel free to check out the videos that led up to this one. Thanks.